Welcome back. Let's look back at page six and then look at the line plot together. It says here in the book, sometimes you see a number by itself. That can tell you about one thing in the world. When numbers are put together like this in a line plot, they can tell you about patterns in the world. The line plot here is organized in a way that helps me visualize the heights of people in this class. I can see that two students are 122 centimeters tall. When I compare that number to the height of the girl named Liz, who is 128 centimeters tall, I picture the two students who are shorter than Liz. This line plot also shows that someone is 170 centimeters tall. This number is much bigger than 128 centimeters. So I picture someone who is much taller than the girl. Visualizing different numbers on the line plot helps us better understand the line plot and the data it represents. If we look at the line plot for where the boy lives, are the temperatures similar for every day in May? Hopefully you said yes, because a pattern is something you observe to be similar over and over again. If we look at the line plot, for where the uh, boy's cousin lives, are the temperatures similar for every day in May? One way to describe this temperature pattern is to give the range. We can say that the range of temperatures in May where the boy lives is 77 degrees to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. This describes the temperature pattern in May with the lowest and highest temperatures. The range of temperatures where the boy's cousin lives was 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. This describes the temperature pattern in May at his cousin's house. Your big word for today is range. Range is the span between the lowest and highest numbers in a group. The range describes one kind of pattern that helps meteorologists make predictions about the weather. Here is our key concept to remember today. Temperature data for one month can be described as the range of daily high temperatures over a whole month. Now, the boy in the book recorded data about precipitation. The kind of precipitation he recorded was rainfall. Let's think back. Remember, the boy in the book recorded data about precipitation, specifically rainfall. But what does the data table tell us about rainfall in May? Notice, the boy did not use a line plot to organize his rainfall data. Instead, he kept a total for every day and then added them all up at the end. If we compare the rainfall data for the boy's location to the data for his cousin's location, we can see that there was more rain where the boy lives than where his cousin lives. By adding up all of the millimeters for every day and comparing the rainfall data for the boy and his cousin, we can see that there was more rain where the boy lives than where his cousin lives. Here is another key concept for today. Precipitation data for one month can be described as the total precipitation over the whole month. Using the total rainfall for the month, it, it makes it easier to compare the rainfall amounts. To compare the weather in different places, meteorologists, just like you, report the total rainfall for a month by adding up the daily rainfall and they use line plots to find the temperature range for a whole month. You guys did a great job today. Here is your lesson reflection with a few questions. Remember, you can write them down, you can draw your answers, you can talk to a neighbor, talk to a teddy bear, talk to a tree, any of those things. Here are your three questions. If you wanna write them down, you can always pause the screen. Why do people put numbers together in line plots? How does a line plot help you understand temperature data? And why is it helpful to add up each day's precipitation and get a total for the month? That is it for our lesson today. I will see you all again in chapter two, lesson three.